Love Line, Coast to Coast. Yep, it is Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That's my friend, partner, and sometimes a lover. Dr. Drew over not, there. Not lately. Ow! No, no. No, he's been on his period. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. Rob Schneider will be in here tomorrow night. You know Rob from uh, all his years on SNL and uh, new movie Animal. Mm. The Animal? Just Animal, I think. All right. That is uh, coming out, I'm guessing, this Friday. So Rob will be in here tomorrow, and it'll be good to see him because we haven't seen him in a while. Mm. And tonight. We will uh, take a whole S load of phone calls. Tanil? Hi. Hey, you're 25. What's up? Well, uh, I took the morning after pill yesterday. I took the first cycle at 10 a.m. and the second cycle at 10 p.m. And then this evening around 6 o'clock, I started having this really horrible pain above my left hip. And then all of a sudden, I started having really severe cramping. I'm not bleeding or anything, but it's worse than any pain that I've ever had with menstrual cramps. Hmm. Interesting. Have you been nauseated or anything? Uh, no, not at all. No stomach cramps, no nothing. Were you on the pill recently? No, uh-uh. And have you ever had pill, been on a birth control pill before? When I was a teenager. And nothing like this happened then? No, That's no problems problem. at all. And I, ha I used to have really severe cramping um, between the time that I had my first child and my second child. Um, okay. And I had my second child eight months ago. And what, did the cramping feel like this? Um, yeah. Okay, and when is your period due? Um, not for another two weeks. Well, what's I'm up with the birth control? Um, married and had an accident. <laughs> All right. Married and had an accident? Yeah. Good, and she had the fire extinguisher laid yeah, around. That's right. You, <laughs> do you, uh, you guys use condoms? Yes. Why don't you get on the pill? Uh, I take a medication called Tegretol. It's an anticonvulsant. Mm -hmm. And typically, um, they put me on really high levels of birth control pills, and even then, it's not guaranteed by any large percentage to work because the Tegretol counteracts the right. birth control. Well, so does the morning after pill work with the Tegretol? I have no idea, but it it's should. worth it. Yeah, it should. It's Why would it. it work if the birth control is not working? Well, uh, again, the birth control pill is supposed to be close to 100% effective. Probably you're knocking down to around 95% with the Tegretol. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I had preeclampsia this last time. Um, was in the hospital for three weeks and almost died with my second child. Nice. She was nine weeks early and was in NICU for five weeks, so I'm really concerned about having another baby sure i just think you're gonna have a little mid-cycle bleeding here and that's probably what the cramping's all about i wouldn't so worry about it you think it could just so i shouldn't be worried about going to the doctor or well anything? the one thing if if yeah, i guess if you get bleeding um god it's a kind of a tricky question because the one thing this could be is an ectopic pregnancy and uh the morning after pill wouldn't really do anything to affect or change or prevent an ectopic pregnancy uh, yeah but what uh, that, that's when the baby gets lodged in the tube or right, something right and if she had but already it, ovulated she just she, had the sex a couple days ago that's what i'm that's what i'm going through in my head is whether yeah. that's even possibly the case let's say she bleeds tomorrow should she be worried about that you know she's she's a 25 year old woman you, you know what i was thinking you know i always talk about what trouble the vagina is oh yeah I think the equivalent on a male, on a 25-year-old male, it'd be like having an 80-year-old man's knee. Yeah, a, or really, hip. a paraplegia. No, just a part, yeah. one part from an old person yeah. that needed constant upkeep. Mm -hmm. Because, you know what I mean? It's like, it's like you have a very, you know, the, the female body, not that much different than the male body. Everything's fine, and then there's that one part, <laughs> constant attention. Yeah. It'd be like you having, eh, yeah, well, and it, and like it, the the elbow and hand of an eighty five year old person. How about just give yourself an eighty year old prostate? You, now you're it's game on. They, no. they always say you, you don't want a female genital tract before the age of fifteen. You don't want a male's after fifty. Yeah, got it. Right. That's why I'm going for the uh, sex change at fifty. Nice, Jessica. Uh, hello. You're nineteen. Yeah. What's up? Um, Alex. What? My husband's on the line too. Or oh, like we've been like separated for a while, like probably like, four months already. Uh huh. And um, we've been like been having like problems, and like they're just kind of getting, I guess, worse. What's the nature of the problems? Trust. Trust. I see. What's so. what's uh, the husband's name? Alex. 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 Yeah. Somebody cheated. She has <laughs> multiple times. Multiple times. No, it, this was before we were married. Okay. Mm -hmm. And he cheated also. I see. Three okay. years ago. <laughs> Why is that all coming back now? 
No, because she just did it recently, like no. in August. I Stinking see. whore. Oh, please. And after we got married. Not even. Okay, I didn't even. Dude, I didn't even have sex with guy. Or I didn't even freaking kiss him, okay? It was, no, but still. It Ooh. was nothing, okay? Was it some sort of thing on the computer or something? Phone. 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 Then what, what did you find out, Alex? Uh, she was talking to another guy, and that was it. And she swore to me up and down. She wasn't, but she was. And what else am I supposed to? I mean, I questioned everything else. Yeah. I mean, the fact that she lied about that suddenly everything's yeah, a lie. Exactly. Well, what was she doing on the phone with the guy? She was just talking to the guy. I don't know. Well, who was the guy? Oh, I don't know. Some, I don't know who. It was. I never really found out. I mean, I'm not the one to get obsessed and look for the guy. You know. Mm, you but, got a little energy to you, though, Alex. What's that? Normal nineteen-year-old energy, though. Well, how old is Alex? Twenty. Twenty. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, Jessica. Uh -huh. Who was the guy you were talking to? Uh, he was just somebody I met over the phone. You met over the phone? Yeah. What, a party line or something? Yeah, it was like a party line. See, what? she was looking for it. What, <laughs> why are you guys married? What? Why did you guys get married in the first place? Um, <laughs> because I love him. <laughs> yeah, you love him and the party line. <laughs> yeah, why don't you behave like you love but him? But it, like, it wasn't like that. Like, it wasn't... It was just me and my friend called one day. It was like nothing, though. I wasn't looking for anyone or anything like that. Oh, okay, but with your dicey past and Alex and his dicey past and all the trouble you guys have had, don't you think you should just stay away from things like that in general? Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I totally regret it. You know, I, okay. I really do. But all right. I don't think he now what forgive now, me for that. Okay, well. Let's forgive her, Alex, because it didn't really amount to anything. And as guys, we all know the uh, proof is in the pudding. I mean, it's the yeah, bottom that's, line. That's true, but I mean, what about like she's lied about that? What else? And it, no, it you're not. You're just. You're just. A lot of things. You know what she has. It always no, seems like he she thinks is. I do, but it's not even like you, that. You know though. what? Because look at, check it's it out. Because She's, I go out with my friends, he thinks I'm doing something. And until one o'clock in the morning, two o'clock oh in the morning. Oh my god! But I haven't seen my. Friends. All right, hold on one second. Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna put them both on hold for one second. Please listen, everyone, do and not. understand why yeah. you do not get married at nineteen oh, or twenty. There it is. There it was. You'd be having the same lame argument at age twenty, wouldn't you, Drew? Yeah, I probably did with a girlfriend. That's right. Yeah. With yourself in the future on the phone or just... No, I see. Okay, I was confused for yeah. one second there. Alex, Jessica? Yeah. Okay, let's just calm down for a second. Are there any children here? No. no. Oh, okay, good. All right. Good. Okay, so ah, here's your plan. The world is safe. Your plan is is not to have any children for a little while, Right. Yeah. Until you guys get good with your relationship. Yes. Yeah. And then start working at the relationship just like it was anything else you wanted to be good at. Jessica, is Alex available in a way that you sort of need a husband to be available? No. Or, so Honestly, that, no. So that's sort of the reason why you're straight, huh? Is that he doesn't sort of meet your emotional needs? Huh? Is there something he could do to make you happier? More attention. Yeah. yeah live together, maybe? Yeah, we don't live together. You know, we've been split up for four months. Really? Why? And it's just, I, I mean, I'm really getting tired of it, you know, and, and I mean, I, I do understand because I don't have a job, you know, I, I understand that, but I don't want, you know, to just, I don't know, like, it, to get back together and things still be the same. I don't want that. I want things to change. No, I don't want that. We so, both, I guess we both don't want it. Okay? So you, you guys separated after you were married. Yeah. And you're now living on your own, or Jessica? I want you to live with her mom. Maybe, okay. maybe, maybe you guys honestly ought to look at each other and say, Gee, we're, maybe we're not up for a relationship now. We may not just be up for it. Mm -hmm. I mean, cause, Well, maybe, because both of you seem sort of okay with the fact that you don't want to be the way you were, and yet you don't know how to get from where you are to where you need to be. And that may just be 10 years of maturity. It may, yeah. it may just living for a little while to get you guys to figure out how to be available, how to be a separate right, well, person in a relationship. Why don't you give them some ground rules and a book to read and we'll move on. You got anything? I mean, look, you two are both a pain in the ass. <laughs> you both have energy, right? Yeah. And when you two get together, you got two pains in the ass under the same roof and there's going to be trouble. And both of you are going to have to work real hard on yourselves. Right now, you're both working on each other, and each other doesn't really like each one of you working on them. You just work on yourself. Be you, Alex, you be a better husband. Jessica, you be a better wife. Or not. Or, or not. Or, or, or cash, you know, yeah. throw on the towel. But if you want the relationship, then work at it. Yeah. 
It's very yeah. simple. And I'm with the, them uh, staying separated for a little while until they get their ass together. And definitely no kids. Oh, yeah. Keddy? Keddy. All right, Keddy. Yeah. You're 22. What's up? Um, well, I mean, I've checked out a couple websites about, like, a penis enlargement pump. Mm -hmm. And I know how it works, but... I was just kind of wondering, they don't say anything about maybe the long-term effect, if there's something negative that could be a long-term effect of it. Not that I've heard of. Yeah. What's wrong with your penis? Well, I mean, I think it's okay, but, you know, I'd kind of like to have something like, you know, Peter North had slapping around, you know? I see. True, you know, Peter North? No. The decorator? Oh, I see. Yeah. yeah. He's a uh, porn star? He's a cake maker? No, porn star, I see. Uh, yes. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, how big's your penis now? Uh, six and a half inches. <laughs> oh, no. Wait a minute. That's bigger than average. You're fine. Yeah, but I... I the, yeah, what's, I what's wrong I, with I your self-esteem that you got to inflate your penis instead of working on your self-esteem? Um, well, I, some problems. I don't really... I'm not really sure what I should do about it. What are the problems? Well, I just don't really approach uh, women that much. And what, what do you do for a living? If I said, um, well, I just got out of college, but if I said what I did, I mean, everyone would know who I was that was listening. What kind of thing do you do? He's the town I candlestick <laughs> maker. <laughs> <laughs> I work in criminal justice. Yeah. All right. It's a, so maybe do you feel good about your job? It's a tough job, but yeah, I, I do it pretty well. I feel good about you know, the work that I do and, and the well, effort. Why can't you meet women? Well, I don't work anywhere around women, but, I mean, I don't like bars, and I don't like to go out. Do you have friends that can introduce you to people? Like, oh, I'm sorry? Do you have friends that can introduce you to people? No, they're worse than me. Your uh, friends? What, what do you like besides bringing down perps? I realize the size of your penis is going to do nothing, nothing for you. No, because, listen, I, hold on. I would be all for enlarging the penis if women knew what size your penis was before they met you. Or if or size before was... before they saw it. If there was a direct relationship between size and desire or enjoyment. Yeah, but... There's nothing like that. But but it's even further away yeah, because... they, they have, don't know. You're, you're naked and on top of them by the time they know what hit them. <laughs> yeah. All right, so don't focus on that. Figure out whatever it is you like to do. And do it and meet people that way. Yeah. I know it sounds trite, but that, that's about your only shot. I do have another question that's a little more intelligent. All right, good. I was kind of wondering, um, about what age is are you most prone to be, like, socialized sexually in which, you know, because I watched, you know, pornography maybe, maybe when I was about 11 and 12 years old, and I saw some things I would rather have never seen. Like what? Well, I mean, like anal sex performed. I don't want to ever, you know, disrespect a girl by... <laughs> doing that but uh mm. you know someone that a i really pansy. care about I'd, <laughs> but what someone that i really care about i wouldn't want to you know ask her to do that and i kind of i am somewhat attracted to it and i was just kind of wondering <laughs> <laughs> maybe. all right listen Keddy, stop thinking so much just uh, go out and live your life join a gym and you know yeah. go go rollerblading go to the park go hang out at a starbucks stop creeping everyone out and thinking everyone She's, I don't know what it is with uh, young guys, but uh, the more thinking you do, the less uh, poontang you get. Mm -hmm. There's a direct correlation there. And he's just thinking himself into a corner. He's, he's got a little creepy vibe about him. Oh, yes. And uh, let me tell you, boys, women pick up on that creep vibe. Well, it's, it's kind of desperation mixed with yeah, in a lack of experience. La yeah. Mixed with... No, I'm going to duct tape your mouth and throw you in the trunk of my car and take you out to the woods and dismember you. Yeah, that business about I, I would never want to soil a lady yet, I kind of find it very appealing. <laughs> yeah. Um, here's the I want my penis to be extra large at the time which we perpetrate that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. The, the thing about women, I found, is they don't smell the BS gene that much. No. I mean, they don't smell BS on a guy. No, in fact, they kind of they kind of attracted to BS. Yes. Ladies, you like BS. You, you'll never admit it because you don't know when a guy's BSing. Yes. We know the BS guys. Oh. A lot of attitude, hair all... Uh, any guy who screws with his hair too much or wears too much jewelry. Any, any guy that can pull off the romantic piece yeah. with, with too smoothly. Or just a serious attitude thing. 
Yeah, but, that's the obvious one. That's but, the one even bugs. But women point. buy into the BS. But what they, but the creepy thing. Oh, that that, that they yeah, see creep desperation right. lack of experience. That's what uh, Keddie's got in game spades. Over. Sam, hello. You're 24. What's up? Um, well, um, me and my girlfriend were having sex, and um, she uh, wanted to use um, her, she wanted to use a strap on on me, and her sister had one, so she went and got it. <laughs> And, um, how, how, just just stop right there for a second. Okay. Anna, isn't that part of the story kind of amusing? Uh, hey, hey, Susie. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing I mean, she didn't ask. I'm guessing she just knew where it was but hidden. But even, hey, yeah. I got an idea. Let's use Susie's. Well, it's, it's like, well, some families are poor and they don't have more than one strap on. Uh, okay. We yeah. had one car, yeah. one bathroom. One strap on. One yeah. strap on. I understand. Times were tight. Well, all she had was a vibrator. Anyway, um, so she went and got it, and uh, afterwards, the last, um, I would say, two weeks, um, I've kind of been, like, itchy there. <laughs> Where? And, uh, okay, well, wait a minute. Hold on. Did she have the strap on, or was yeah. it just Yeah, a... she went and got it. No, no. All, the, 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 his all girl... the sister had was a vibrator. No, all this girl had was a vibrator. Her. She had one. Yes, all the sister had the Of the owner vibrator. of the strap the on is what I meant. Yeah. Okay. I so don't. anyway, ever since then, um, uh, what's your, what is your question? Kind of, I got what? the I, we got the itchy piece. What what'd okay. she do with the strap on when you were done with it? Put it back. Oh. Yeah, she washed it off and put it back. Sweet. With a letter, thank you. A oh, rose. Is she still living at home? No. All right. Is she live with her sister? Yeah. Okay. Oh Those two God. need to be separated. Yes. How old is the sister? Um, eleven. Older. Okay. Way, way older, is that we said? Slightly. No, like Slightly. five years. How old, okay. is, how old is your girlfriend? Um, she's uh, 20. Mm. Mm. Um, so now you itch in the butt area? <laughs> yeah. And so what I was asking is, like, did I, do you think that I, like, caught something here or what? Is, well, that, is that an activity you've engaged in in the past? This is the first time you've sort of experienced the... <laughs> um, this is the first time that I've experienced... Is your girlfriend into, into this stuff? Yeah, dude. Apparently runs in the family. <laughs> and God knows where that thing was parked before it got to your ass. Probably the sister's boyfriend's ass. Oh. Exactly. That's totally where she got the idea. Okay. And uh, no qualms about forcing something up your rectum that was up some other guy's ass just uh, moments earlier? I wasn't earlier. reasoning it all that out. I... Okay. Well, how, forget about reasoning. How about cleaning? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm did less... you give it a good wiping down before it went up in there? Um... <clears throat> well, no, actually, I'm less concerned about a venereal disease because that's not likely... I it mean, wouldn't live no, on no, it, right? It, however... It wouldn't? Okay. No, no, no. Well, 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 wait a minute. Okay. The, the traditional sort of classical venereal diseases. However, uh, hepatitis C and HIV require very special cleansing solutions like glutaraldehyde where they stay on there. Yeah, yeah. They're not going to stay there and they stay alive. Mm. Oh, please, for how long? Listen, like when people use those endoscopes and things, they have to be very specially cleaned, even though well, they're going to be used for a week later. They overdo it. But if this thing's dry and it's sitting in a closet in a hamper up in some see. shelf somewhere, it's not going to have right. that. But the point is, I think you've got something called pruritus ani, and uh, it's probably just a hemorrhoid, that kind of thing, and it's just irritation. You get some anusol cream over the counter, and that's that. Did she use a lot of lube? Yeah. Did you borrow some of her sister's lube, or did she use her own? Her own. Oh, my God. I, right. I just, I can't even say Sam, please do not have children. <laughs> okay? <laughs> okay. All right, and uh, for Hanukkah, see if you can get a, a, a nice strap on for yourself. <laughs> okay, buddy? Oh. All right, good times. So. Oh, my God. His mom. I think he was serious, too. Yeah, I know. Justin? Yeah. You're 17? Yeah. What's up? Um... Me and my friends pulled a prank on this guy, one of my one of our friends. We put a ortho tricycline pill in his drink, and we want We haven't talked to him in like a week, so we don't know if he's okay or not. Just think is is there is there a female on earth that would that pulls this kind of J O stuff on their friends, <laughs> putting uh, birth control or, or whatever. <laughs> I know. I don't Although think so. Although that last caller's girlfriend probably had a little bit of that spirit in her, I must admit. Yeah. Well, with the 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 uh, sort of no. saucy women, sister. Women don't have the uh, jack off gene. They no. have the stab in the back gene, but not the jack off gene. Yeah. 
All right. No, that's, uh, he that's get a little typical. nauseated. Get a little nauseated, but that's about it. He's fine. Single pill? Uh, yeah, I think so. You oh, got to you got to up, up the dose next it's a time. Blue one. He probably vomited and forgot about it. Didn't know anything about it. All right. Yep. All, All right. right, Justin. Thanks. Hey, Adam, you're yeah. the awesome dude. Thanks. Man, show's awesome. Where, Thank what part you. of Texas are you calling from? Huh? What part of Texas are you calling from? Dallas. Good times. True. Sure, why yeah. are you like, uh, thumping your chest? Palpitations. Really? You get palpitations once in a while. You do? Yeah. What What is thumping your rib cage to? Makes it stop. It does? Yeah. Just because you know you're doing it? No, I wasn't even aware it? I was doing it. If you haven't brought it to my attention, I wouldn't have. What, what happens? What's a palpitation? Your heart Just gets going? Extra beats, yeah. Hmm. You anxious? No. Horny? Coffee. Mm, dry mouth? Yeah. All right, drop your that, pants. Get in your underpants. I'll look at you in an hour. Lizzie? Yes. Yeah, go. You're 22. Sorry. What's uh, up? Yeah, I was um, raped, like, uh, I guess, like, month, end of March, and I really haven't had any response to it. I haven't reacted to it. I'm not traumatized by it. Like, I, my I went, like, two days after it happened. My parents kind of... My mom took me to, like, this spa in Arizona. I was there. Like, she left. I was there by myself. Like, she came and visited me sometimes. But, like, for, like, a couple weeks, then my dad has... uh, He does business in New York, and he's got a condo there. Like, I was there, and, like, my aunt took me shopping. All right. Well, (laughs) hold on. I don't want to go through your entire day planner, but hold on. We get the picture. Everything you 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 didn't you didn't just went on with you didn't freak out, right? But so like I've been back in my regular routine now for like only like two weeks, and well, who raped you? I it was random. I was jogging and I was it was random. Like he jumped me. Wow. And it was like he pulled me into a parking garage that was under construction. It happened to be part of the hospital and. Security guard found me unconscious and really they did they whack you in the head or something i i when he threw me down my head must have because i had i had to get stitches in my head and like so you weren't awake for the rape parts of it i remember him ripping he had his hand i think i don't know if it was because of my head or i blacked out because he had his hand like right at my neck to hold me down like he was break. i was flat on my back and he mm-hmm. like was bracing himself like right at my neck with one hand how long before you went unconscious after he attacked you oh god i don't know um i i think i remember him penetrating me no, no wait a minute he attacked you and then quickly you were unconscious or well, you had minutes like, i was jogging he like grabbed me like hand over my face and pulled me in and that's all kind of blurry and then i remember hitting the ground so within and- a few seconds you were unconscious no, probably minutes. Minutes. I, I, I would from think where I was running and where I was found, it's not. I mean, they weren't like close. Like, I mean, he had to drag me through. Like, all right, hang on a second. I, I would think just that assault would be so traumatizing as to give you sort of a post-traumatic stress reaction. Okay. Now, the only way that I know that people there's two ways that people sort of go on with things when traumatic, highly arousing traumatizing experiences aren't sort of processed as something special is one you used to being traumatized oh god no okay or two you're really really suppressing it or three they get into acting <laughs> and show business and, right? and this will come out i mean there will be a reaction to this and you, well that's what i'm afraid of yeah. all right well you gotta you gotta get some help before it comes yeah. out and my, catches you off guard my parents attitude about this whole thing is i think like you're okay well, that's what how they want to believe it is. And that's like, a- it's the same thing with my friends. Like, like my mom has specifically said to me, like, "Oh, if you know, they ask you how you're doing, like, you just say you're fine." Because I had to, I was supposed to graduate in May. It was the beginning of this month. And what what I school? Her, I'm supposed to graduate. Sorry, in June. What school? Northwestern, mm-hmm. and. I am not graduating because it happened over my spring break, mm. and I didn't go back for the last um, trimester. So I'm not graduating. So is there something to be explained, which I don't know what my parents told me. Well, look, like, look. I kind of live in this, like, high society crap. Okay, but listen. Sorry, sorry. Y- you need to get yourself a therapist. Relax. You're okay. You're I normal. <laughs> Thank God you come into this with a intact uh, sort of psyche. And you will get through this. But you need the opportunity to get through it. And everybody else doesn't want to feel the pain uh, of acknowledging what you've been through. And that's fine. That's them. But you need an opportunity to have the feelings. I, I Yeah. I, my parent, like, I don't, 
how do I find or get into therapy without, well, not North- without telling my parents, but like kind of do the preliminary work? Yeah, but Northwestern has an elaborate student health system. Why don't you take advantage of that? I haven't been like back there. I don't know. Well, you're in Chicago now still, right? Well, yeah, I'm north of Chicago, yeah. Well, why not well, go they, yeah, go back there? Get back in and get involved regularly with some treatment. I'm sure there are rape support groups too. Get a group, sure group experience it. and an individual experience would be very, very helpful. All right, and you can be uh, one Ooh, of. Oh, sorry, sorry, she went through that. I mean, that's the real McCoy. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, you can be one of the few people in your rape support group who is <laughs> bona fide raped. Yeah. I mean, guy, you know, jogging. Why is it everyone uh, who was not raped? By their boyfriend or that sort of date rape thing. It was raped in, a, in an urban jogging. park. Jogging. Jogging. In Central Park or along the lake in Chicago. Yes. <laughs> if I have a daughter, I will uh, forbid her from jogging. I would uh. tell her she can walk or she can sprint. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, if you're walking, you cannot be raped. Yeah. And if you're in a full-blown sprint, you can't be raped. It's the jogging that attracts a rapist. Interesting. I'm going to work on that, nice Derek. Thank you. Strong work. Thank you. We'll be back. Love line, everybody. That's the radio show. There's Drew. I'm Adam. Phone number 1 800 LOVE 191. Rob Schneider is going to be in here tomorrow night promoting his new movie, I'm guessing. And let's get back to the phones and speak to Ryan. Hello. Hey, Ryan, you're 14. What's up? Hey, Brian, wait, hang on one second. You know, when La- Rob was last year last time. He said something that was rather striking. He said that he read our relationships book. It was the best book he'd ever read on relationships. Remember that? No. <laughs> you know, now that you say it, it sounds uh, sort of familiar, yeah, but no, I would good. never remember a compliment like that. I only remember bad things people say to me. Yeah, of course. All right, Ryan, go ahead. Yeah. Um, You're right, I shouldn't mention good things. Well, um, this girl at school, I really like her, and uh, she, she, like, she like considers me like her brother, and she's like, oh, Ryan, you're so sweet, you're so funny. I'm like, oh, that means she, like, doesn't... Uh, Think of me as like a guy. She doesn't like. Does she have boyfriends? What? Does she see other guys? Uh, yeah, but not now. Why don't you ask her out? Uh, I'm like scared. Well, then you're you're gonna stay the brother. (sighs) Ain't gonna happen any any other way. Is there any way I can like change that before I have to ask her out? Your brother status. Yeah. Now this is an interesting male trait, isn't it? Yeah, can we, can we work on her? Can we can mm. we tool her up in the shed somehow? You know what I mean? Yeah, this is gonna reprogram her. But it all happens at sort of a fantasy level. It's like, well, magically, yeah, I'll sprinkle, so I'll say a few chants on her, and well, I'll this is really the genesis of Spanish Fly. Yeah, this is the beginning of that. Yeah. Can yeah. I sprinkle something into her drink or food that is going to make her like me? Yep. Or the guy's version of love potion yeah. make her horny? Yeah. Ryan? Yeah. It's not going to work. How long have you known her? Since, like, preschool. And now I just, like... Preschool? Yeah, and, like... Are you in a, are you in a small school or something? Uh, pretty small. It's yeah. a private school. Yeah, mm-hmm. see. Mm-hmm. See, I think uh, there's a lot of mixing and matching in those little populations that stay together for many, many yeah. years. And I, I think he could just ask her out. Is it for, even She's just your time. age? She's uh, in your grade? Yeah. What is that, eighth or ninth grade? Yeah, eighth. Eighth grade. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I remember man. this. <laughs> oh man, I was paralyzed. <laughs> really, I truly, was so paralyzed. It's like uh, Ryan. I hate to say this, but at that stage of my life, it's like I didn't have. It's like I was a car trying to run without an engine. You know what I mean? I just yeah. didn't have anything going on that right. could, I could. I had call no upon. engine. I had no training. No, no wheels. I had no rear end. I had no, no wheels. wheels yeah. No doors. No fenders. No. Da- I, w- I was just a frame, barely. Yeah, I don't even know what's going on. Well, look, Ryan. It's normal, Ryan. Here's the good news. Here, Here's what I'd like to do. You'll be a big star like Adam someday. I know it'll... <laughs> well, <laughs> let's not go overboard. I'm literally a millionaire, as you know, Drew. Ryan? Yeah? I'm going to try something on you, and I hope it works. And if if not for you, some other youngster listening. Oh. I give I give this speech about every three years. I think it's uh, high time I give it again. Good. All right, I'm giving you oral sex. Start now. Right? Ready? <laughs> okay. Go. Now, and, and Drew, I, I, Drew, you're a doctor. You're considered a genius by most, except for me, who really knows you. 
I want you to chime in if you find any fault. With I know where you're going. That I say. I, I already know where you're going. All right, you yeah. stop me if you yeah. hear anything you don't like. Okay. Anything that you can find fault with. All right, you won't. All right? You won't yell at me. And I will not yell. All the things that you do in the eighth grade, the ninth grade, even all the way through high school, socially, do not amount to a hill of beans. Outside of high school. Now, if you kill somebody, if you get somebody pregnant, if you rape somebody, if you do something horrible to someone or let someone do something horrible to you, yes, that counts. But all of the jockeying, all of the asking out, all of I think she likes me but I'm too scared to say anything, it, it registers as a zero in your adult life. A zero. Even though it is so powerful to you now when you're able to step back and look at it, you'll think, oh, did I waste time and energy, and it, why? It is like you seeing a giant inflatable wonder dog in a Macy's parade and being scared s <laughs> of it at age three years old and then realizing it's just a bunch of fabric and air yeah. and some helium. Yeah. Okay? okay? Ryan, what, if you ask her out or don't ask her out, or half ask her out, it will not make a difference in the next few months, few years, or the rest of your life. However, however, if you spend too much of your life not asking people out, then you'll just be a pathetic male adult living in a one-bedroom apartment, using uh, one of those plug-in stoves, one of those hot <laughs> plates, heating cans of beans still in the can. George Foreman's grill. And using. eating it uh, right out of it with a uh, spork that you got from uh, IHOP. But, uh, but So, you ask her out tomorrow. Do you hear me? Right. It is, it is important. You ask her out. Quiet down, Drew. Well, you ask, no, quiet. I, I, I'm on a roll. I said no yelling. All right. I'm yelling at Ryan. You ask her out on a date tomorrow. Okay. And you will thank us. And you know what? I'll, I'll, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it a step further. If you ask her out on a date tomorrow and she says no, you'll still be better off than where you are today. Yes. If she says you'll absolutely... Gain, you'll gain a skill. That's right. You'll, if she says absolutely not, I wouldn't do it in a million years, you will still be better off than you are today. And th those are the two important... Th three important things, really. The goals are you, A, to build some esteem, to build some skill, social right. skills, and three, try to enjoy adolescence as much as it's humanly possible, which is okay. not very much. Did I forget the part about uh, drinking the sixer of Mickey's Big Mouth? No, you got that in there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Because okay. that's a very crucial element to this. Brad? Yeah. You're 38? 38. What's up? I got a problem. I, uh, I'm a manic depressive. Um, I've got uh, OCD and ADD. And um, my deal is, um, well, for the past six years now, um, I uh, I hold in my uh, hold in my poop. I don't go to the bathroom, and I do it deliberately. And I've talked to my doctors about it. How many years has this been going on? For about six. The poo. Six seven years now. That's, and, uh, that's uh, no, he, he has pooed across that six years. I He's see. been withholding each of the across those years. Um, well, and what do you get out of it? How does that work? Yeah. yeah. Well, I you know I eventually go after you know about. Six days. And, and what, do you, what do you accomplish by having held? What do you get out of that? I don't know. I mean, I... Is there an experience, some feeling? Serious sort of skid like mark, I, mean, that's what they That's what they ask me. I just say it's like a feeling almost, but I don't know why I do it. No one knows why. Yeah, it goes with, you know, that kind of thing goes along with OCD, right? Hang on a second, Brad. Ryan, young Ryan, I hope you're still listening. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't ask girls out in junior high. You become the 38-year-old OCD guy who holds his own duke in. <laughs> now, you crap like once a week? Yeah. Do you eat normally? I eat normal. And, Drew, what can it do to you medically not to do this, not to move those bowels on a regular basis? Drew, you always say that, and I hate that, because the only thing I do well medically is crap. Yeah, but that's spiritual. I mean, that's for my you. pride that's and joy. That's your spiritual connection. You understand? I'm amazingly regular. Yeah, I understand. And you say uh, I get nothing out of that, and I know well, you get your esteem built. That no, I know you crap every three days, and you have a jealous, vengeful Wreck ass. Them. Wreck them. Thank you, Brad. Yeah. Uh, will your doctors have you on any medication? Oh yeah. Not for um, not for that. For OCD though. Stuff, but right. I don't know. I mean, I. 
uh, you know, when I have to go, I'll purposely sit in the chair and suck it up and hold it in, and I'll go in my pants sometimes. And mm-hmm. yeah, very stubborn man. Yeah, are you able to work? I'll work, but um, where do you work? At a hotel. I and see. Sometimes I'll, you know, I'll have to sit down and and hold it in. And sometimes I'll get in my pants and yeah. Well. I, I don't know the specific theories as to why these kinds of behaviors develop. Have you heard about this one? Yeah. I, there, there are people that retain stool. The kids do this. I mean, is, isn't this, this a, a weird adolescent type well, behavior? This is, this is a, aside from being masochistic, it's sort of a developmental arrest symptom. Anything happen to you when you were little? Um, I had, uh, uh, I was, I wasn't raped or anything, but I, I had a sexual encounter with a, uh, a 16-year-old when I was 13. Mm-hmm. He made me, you know, I'd give him blowjobs and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, we would bet even maybe more, maybe something. Yeah, the more went on. All right, so, hey, Brad. Yeah. You're 38. You're not even 40 yet. How about, you know, seeing about salvaging your life? You know, take your medication. You know, you realize this uh, bowel movement thing is uh, a strange thing. How about just taking a dump when you got to take one? I mean, I know then That's you the wouldn't... Thing. I don't want to. I, I know Why? you don't want to, but I, I don't want to do anything. I still do something. I mean, I, I, I know I, I can't talk crazy people out of being crazy. But, Brad, you know you're a little crazy, right? Right. And one of the things that makes you crazy is you take a crap once a week. Yeah. How about engaging in some behaviors that sane people might partake in like crapping it's kind of like an eating disorder you know that you do get something out of this albeit dysfunctional and it's a natural function it's something that needs structure to it and it really requires you letting go of that control and going ahead and having whatever feelings you're containing by going through this or whatever sorts of arousal benefits you're getting out of it and just going you know the same time every day sitting down and letting go and being much more structured with it so you don't get into that sort of cycle of preoccupation and obsession. Hold on. I'm going to change Brad's life. Brad? Yeah. Why don't you get yourself one of those toilet seats that squirts in the ass like I got? You'll be begging to Duke. He'll never leave. <laughs> You'll be camped on that toilet like Elvis. <laughs> Listen, crazy guy. You take a you, you're a couple of cramps a week from being sane. It's like an eating disorder. You oh, sort just of, do it. You just patients. Oh, eat, eat, don't eat. coddle Wait, him. Well, just listen. do it. Eat, eat very structured meals throughout the day. I you understand. Be structured with the toilet. Oh, okay, listen. Here's your tall order. Take a crap. How tall a order is that? Just do it, would you? I know you're nuts, but do it. Then you won't be nuts because you'll be acting sane. It's my new thing. Gonna get that lecture again tonight. I don't care how nuts all of you are. Just act sane, and you will not be nuts. You can be nuts inside, but you will not be nuts on the outside. We'll never know. Okay. You'll never know, and that's what's important. That's the important <laughs> thing. All right, Drew. Number two. Well, number one. Let's go. What do you say? Is a little homage to Brad. See if you can squeeze one off together. Yes. Oh. One cheek per seat. Let's go. Hee hee. Love line, everybody. I'm Adam. That's Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Rob Schneider will be in here tomorrow night. And let's talk to Bill, who has some advice for the pooper. Bill? Yeah. You're 16? Yeah. You had a little poop problem in the past? Yeah, I did. <laughs> That's good alliteration, Drew. What? Consonants, yeah. actually, isn't it? Yeah, I'd just like to let him know that, if he's still listening, that he should, like, get some help with it because uh, I had problems with it, and I went to the doctor, and, you know, they, they had to start using enemas and getting you to drink mineral oil because, I mean, if you hold it in for a long time and then you go and it hurts really bad and it stretches out your O-ring and... Yeah. Your O-ring? Yeah. <laughs> how, uh, uh, how long? <laughs> Who uh, produces that? Is that Morton Thiokol? <laughs> and, um... How long did you go when you're... Like, give me your best... Like, how many days did you put together without a number two? Um, I'd say at least three. Mm-hmm. Here's what I, I've seen, is uh, people that abuse um, laxatives eventually can't go without the laxative. Uh-huh. And the bowel doesn't move normally. Uh-huh. And they can fill up, so they haven't gone for days and days and days, maybe weeks sometimes. Yeah. The whole thing becomes... I've even had, some, I had a patient out of the colon removed. Bad times. Yeah. Um, but you say, and you've said this before, yeah. 
no healthier to go three times a day than someone who goes once every other day. No different. I mean, there's no syndrome associated with that, no, other than discomfort from the bowel filling up. Mm -hmm. It's purely a sort of mechanical issue. And that, that area is meant to hold waste. Yes. That's all it does. Absorb water from waste. That's all it does. Mm-hmm. All right. Just those weird preoccupations can't with colon me, are nothing give me that but one, though. weird preoccupations. That's it. I mean, that, that is their, their soul and their spiritual and their emotional worlds need to be examined, not their colons. Yeah. I mean, nothing to do with I mean, plaque building up on your insides. Or that, that is, that is what like I find that. so bizarre. We do colonoscopies where you look through people's colons with a scope. And then before that, you make them squeaky clean because you have to be able to see every inch of the surface of their colon. You clean them out. They're not happy, healthy people. They're, they're you know, depleted because they've had diarrhea for two days and they have nothing in there. But, dude, what about all those toxins that build up uh, inside your colon? Yes, yes. No? Just nonsense. In fact, when Jerry from Survivor was up here, mm -hmm. during one of the breaks, she goes, I've never been so cleansed of toxins. She was she was malnourished. She would help massive edema when she refed herself. Yeah. Wh I know. Where, what is what are these toxins? Where are, where are these things? Just describe. I just want somebody to tell me one of them. What is the structure of one toxin? Please. Yeah. You you could have a nice bone chilling talk with my screwball mom about uh, toxins building up in the blood system. Oh. Hey, I remember my mom used to talk about giving blood and getting uh, lead out of your blood <laughs> oh system by replacing. Uh -huh. But hey, it makes sense if you say, okay, you carry around uh, seven pints of blood in you. And uh, you're living in a, in a society where you're taking lead in via, you know, airborne particles or water or drinking, eating utensils or something. Then you give some of that blood and you make new blood. You're not using the old blood. How much blood do you waste anyway if you're not bleeding? Do you waste? I mean, you still got the same blood in you? No, no. It turns over every 120 days. Oh, really? Yeah. So every four months it turns over? Mm -hmm. Your entire system? Mm-hmm. Seven pints, is that what that is? Well, you're confusing the red blood cells with the, the fluid it flows in. Yeah. The red blood cells are turned over every 120 days. Uh huh. Yeah, good times. Yeah. Matt? Yeah? Does that all happen on one day, or is it slowly? No, each day. I see. <laughs> it's not like an oil change. Matt, you're 16. What's up? Eh, uh, uh, well... I want oh happy late birthday by the way Adam thanks yeah. by the way my birthday present to you Adam is not getting a birthday present I didn't I, even notice yeah by but, the way. no no but by, I just want to pay homage to you know our good friendship and the fact that I wouldn't dream of disturbing you with a gift yeah. it's uncomfortable well my my yeah. uh, my family has joined you in your quest by the <laughs> way and get squat from any of those losers go ahead man all right well uh, I'm a long time listener first time caller and uh, well I love you guys show and nice. Adam man show rocks. Thanks. And, okay, well, my question is, I have one big question, one little question, but the big question is, I, did, I found out, I guess, fairly recently that, uh, well, my parents have been divorced for about three years, separated for four, that uh, the the girl or the woman my dad cheated on my mom with, and which basically broke up the marriage, he got married to without telling me. Mm -hmm. And... I he had dropped a couple like hints to me or like stuff like that like he wanted me to know because like he I'd be like talking to him because I talk to him on a regular basis he is like well with my sister and uh, he has two kids from a previous marriage I'm like basically the only one that calls him on a regular basis and you know I, he, that he has a good relationship with yeah. and he'd say like uh, yeah I'll drop by uh, with the check later but uh, my wife's kind of sick I gotta go and uh, uh, why do you bother with him. He sounds like a delight, your father. Oh, he's a very, very dy dynamite individual. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I really love my dad. And uh, the, th I, the thing, I think the reason I have a, a good relationship with him is because I don't really expect a lot out of him. Mm, because yeah. I know my dad's, like, not the world's greatest dad. Yeah, I mean, there's something to that, being realistic about who he is. Which yeah. is a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> All right. He, okay. he may not be in the top mm, billion. <laughs> yeah, that's not, not two billion, I'd say. Well, what, so what's the question? Well, I want to confront him about it. About I mean, what? About his behavior? Well, I, I want to see if he's married. Because, okay, well, another... Well, whatever you whatever you do, Matt, do not expect it to be a gratifying experience. Oh, I'm, if you, I'm not. That's yeah. why I'm, if you just want some information, you just want an explanation, you're going to get a lot of BS, probably. That's why I haven't really asked it. And another thing is that 
uh, one thing my dad hasn't told me is, uh, well, I'm 16, my sister's 14, but in between, like, around 85, he uh, got that woman pregnant and had a kid, mm-hmm. yeah. like, out of wedlock, yeah. and he lives with, um, it, he lives with, well, I guess, his new wife now and that kid. No, and well, hold on. What's your dad? Is he an attorney or a car salesman? Even worse, he works at a recording studio. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, all right. Hey, Matt, mm-hmm. we got to take a break. Um, Go ahead, ask him, make it sure you understand it's a fact-finding mission, not going to be an emotionally pleasing, gratifying experience. Don't expect much. Yeah, you have a realistic uh, understanding of who your dad is. Don't expect much beyond that. And for a guy who came, uh, sprang forth from the loins of an a-hole, Matt sounds like a decent guy. Yes. All right. Hello, everybody. It's Loveline. I'm Adam. That's Drew. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Rob Schneider in here tomorrow night. Back to the phones we go. Becky? Hi. How you guys doing? Good. You're 15. What's up? Um, I was recently, like, just a few months ago, put in two psycho hospitals for, like, the first time was attempted suicide, and the second time was, like, because I didn't want to take my medication. You're insane. Okay. Mm-hmm. Hey. Hey. Okay. Yeah. Um... And I, like a month and a half ago, I stopped taking the medicine. My parents don't know. And, like, I'm starting to feel like, you know, the old things. I'm starting to cut myself again. And Why don't you like, go ahead and get back on the medicine? Because I don't like the fact that I have to take medication to be normal. Well, well uh, you know, people don't like having any kind of illness. It's unfortunate when you have to deal with that. And people your age that are diabetics don't like having to take insulin to keep stay alive. And very often they don't take their insulin. They have all kinds of awful consequences. But the fact is you have this imbalance. you got to take medicine. If you don't, you suffer. Why not take the medicine? Because, like, I know even if I tell my parents that I'm not taking it, like, they're, they're going to make me go on it, but they're going to put me in a psycho hospital again. Yeah, so why don't you go ahead and just take it on your own? Right, and it's going to take, like, another, like, four to six weeks or whatever. To not necessarily. That. Sometimes it's going to kick in pretty quick. Yeah, like, I don't know, the first time it took, like, over two months. What are the medicines? Um, Wellbutrin and Depakote. Depakote takes a while oftentimes, but the Wellbutrin can be very fast-acting. So go ahead, take your medicine. Okay. All right. Thanks a lot. All right, Becky. All right. Hey, good times, right? All right, thanks. All right. <laughs> Listen, everyone, take your medicine. Julie. Hi. You're 18. What's up? Um, In my vagina, it feels like it's swollen. Mm -hmm. and around my lip part. That's right. And uh, I was wondering if that could be due to some sort of cancers or some sexually transmitted diseases. Most probably both. What? Were you recently sexually active? Yes. And you started having discomfort after that sexual activity? Well, it's not that I really feel it, um, like, physically, like like a pain or anything. Mm -hmm. It's just... If I was to feel up there, it feels swollen. Uh, Why don't you go have somebody take a look so we can figure out what's going on here? Okay. And you're sexually active, right? So you go ahead and get pelvic exams regularly? Uh, no, I don't. All right. So you got to do that. Okay. Do you understand why that is? Why? Because women your age get cervical cancer, and regular pap smears prevent that from happening. And if you get cervical cancer, it's very deadly. Okay. Okay? You can prevent that from happening. Swelling could be just a vaginitis. It could be just some irritation. It could be herpes. could be a, 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 other sexually transmitted diseases. But you are not going to find out what the heck that is unless you go in there and take a look. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. All right. Hey, good times. <laughs> it works in almost every application. Uh, it's kind of like, like aloha. Yeah. yeah. Mahalo, aloha, good times. Mahalo. <laughs> well, no one does that mahalo like Don Ho, though. Oh, uh-uh. uh, sounds like he... he Swallowed you up. Yeah, yeah. He starts to say mahalo. And then he uh, just, someone steps on his stomach after that. Uh, <laughs> so I, I just have an image of that. Uh, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Michelle? Yeah? You're 15? I'm 17. You're no, 17. Well, <laughs> Sorry, I'm kind of nervous. I'm, All right. But, um, yeah, my ex-boyfriend's in prison. It's not really prison. It's like kitty prison, you know, a juvie thing. But he wrote me a letter a while ago, and like a few weeks ago, and I'm really scared. I don't know if I should write him back or not. Yeah. What'd the letter say? Um, it said he was sorry for everything he did to me because I went out with him when I was 14, and he was really abusive and everything. Like, he used to hit me and stuff like that. Okay, that's not going to change. Not without long, long periods of treatment. Well, 
What if he got a tattoo of Christ while he was in the pen? You think that would getting closer? Mm. Well, how old is he now? He's the same age as me. He's Why would you go back in with a guy that was abusive like oh, that? Oh, I don't want to get back with him or anything like that. I just, I don't know. He really wanted me to write him back in the letter. It says, please, please write me back. You're going to get sucked right on in, aren't you? That's what I'm scared of. Yeah. I don't want to, like, end up being with him again or anything like that. Yeah, well, you might as well stop now. How long is he in for? Um, I think it said two years. I don't know what it's for, though. He didn't say. Okay. So many things yes. that people do that just happen start right here. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's 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 the it's, you shouldn't be going out for the coffee. You shouldn't be responding to the letters. You shouldn't be alone in the bedroom together. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? It's it, it's a series of bad choices, and she can make a good one right here, right now. Well, and, and you know, I was thinking that too, which basically the way I was looking at it, and I, I think this is probably restating what you were saying, which is at this point, all you have to do is not return the guy's letter, That's right. and you're done. Yeah. Well, it, this is this is tantamount to breaking it off with someone after one date, right. as opposed to being with him for a, a month year. and a half. Yeah. Okay, I understand that. So just know. don't don't return this one, and don't even write him one of those letters that says, "I'm sorry, I know what you're going through. We can't be what we were. No contact. I feel sorry for it. No. He'll not write you. Well, I'm just kind of I don't know. I uh, Michelle, me. stop, stop, stop now. We're telling you to stop now. Stop it. Seriously. You're, you're going to talk yourself into that letter. You're going to take a, a step, a big step forward if you return that letter, and it's going to be a real slippery slope, and you may just slide down the other side and never be able to grab a branch or anything to slow yourself down after That's it. This. It's fine. He was abusive. Put it, put it down. Forget it. But I don't want to regret not writing to him because I was diagnosed no. with post-traumatic stress disorder. What? I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. And what yeah. happened with me and him is part of the reason I have it. And of I, course. I feel like I kind of need, like, closure or something. Like yeah, that. No. the closure is you having the self-esteem to do something ritualistic with that letter and yeah. put it away forever. Let me tell you about closure oh and God. strength, everyone. It's about not doing anything sometimes. Not picking up the phone, not writing the letter, not throwing the rock, not ramming the car in front of you. Michelle's hell-bent on getting back with him. That's what that is, Michelle. That's what that is. Yes. You can disguise it as closure, but that's BS. It's BS. Wow, Drew. No, I, 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 I can't stand denial. It drives me insane. It really does, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. That's not good. Why? Someone in your family steeped in denial? Mm. Most of them? <laughs> Probably. Your whole family? No, no. I don't know what it is about denial. It, it's the... I, I don't like paranoia either. I you don't like it either. You can't like you can't write reason. You know what I mean. You can't find a place to connect when there's too much denial or, yeah. or too much paranoia. It's like it's yeah. it's, it's it's too disconnected from reality. Uh huh. Yeah. I don't like people that take care of themselves too much or worry too much about themselves. <laughs> Do you not like those people? Yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm really the worst. Uh, I you know every time we do some uh, nutty thing at the man show. And there's somebody going, well, now, shouldn't we put down some grip tape and put, like, uh, don't we need some extra lighting? Shut up. I was up. like, ah, just get in there. <laughs> I was like, well, this, we, we need to get a stuntman or something. Uh, we can't have the, we can't up. have one of them. And now, just shoot him with the, shoot him with the exploding dookie. He'll be fine. I <laughs> uh, should wear protective. God, no, he'll be cool. What He's about the good. testicle outfit? That's going to get rolled. Yeah, uh, what, what do we got insurance for? He's fine. Katie? Hi. You're 15. What's up? Yeah, um... I haven't had my period in about eight months, and then I just started... Ah, oh, you're fine. Quit complaining. Get back in there. <laughs> oh, no, and I just started this afternoon, and um, I'm Ooh. going through, like, a tampon, like, every half hour to an hour. Ooh, did they do something to start your period, like give you some medication? No, uh-uh. Have you seen a doctor about this? Not, no, I just started this afternoon. You, you really should see someone. Not, not so much about the bleeding, but the degree of irregularity you're having. Uh -huh. are, are you overweight at all? Um, uh, a little, a little bit. bit. There's something called polycystic ovarian syndrome that actually is very important for you to know about if you have it. And it's associated with being a little overweight, a little resistant to the effects of insulin, so there's a chance of diabetes later on, mm -hmm. and really regular periods from multiple cysts. And it's worth knowing about. And there are other things that can cause this, too, that should, it should be evaluated at your age. You know what's funny about that? When you ask someone if they're a little bit overweight, yeah. when they stutter for a few minutes, that's usually in the... It's 10... It's more than 10 pounds overweight because it wouldn't count that 10. And less than 40 
because they would just go ahead and say they were overweight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the chick who's uh, five eight and one sixty, which which is actually perfect for PCO polycystic ovarian syndrome. That's part of that. That's kind of describes. So it's a good thing, right? No, No. No. I'm kind of like chunky. (laughs) Chunky, I love that girl, Chuck. Yeah, Chucky. (laughs) You're 21. What's up? I just got back from a visit from back home, Illinois, Uh and. uh, saw one of my old girlfriends and that I haven't dated for three years now and when I saw her again I fell head over heels again for her and I'm here in California I don't know what to do is she worth moving back for or what why'd you break up with her in the first place um, I went down to Florida for a few months and we just lost contact and why wasn't it something worth maintaining contact for I tried and she's just tough to get a hold of mm-hmm yeah. Uh, speaking of denial, she into you now? Well, she broke up. I mean, well, he moved to Florida, and she, she yeah, dumped but, it. But why? Why now? Is it glorious? And then it was that eh, whatever. Yeah. I, I think I'm older now. Um, she's just good to good to talk to. Yeah. Um, we just hit yeah. it off for a while. What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing in San Diego? Trying to make some money. Here's the deal. Cold streak. Yeah. What's that? Yeah, you know, yeah, you've you had a tough time with the ladies in San Diego. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, I've only, here, I've only been out here eight months. So. Right. No luck. No. Yeah, yeah. If you met a chick in San Diego, you were halfway into. You wouldn't even dream of moving back to Chicago. <laughs> I mean, this is based on your desperation, not on how much she's blossomed. All right. He's got the radio up, so I'm going to uh, hang up on him. Yeah, that's it. That's what I was getting at, too. When, it's when, amazing. When he had a lot going on, it was like, yeah, hey, whatever. Now he's alone. He feels uncomfortable. It's like, whoa, this one's fantastic. Well, it's amazing how good anything can look when you've been denied it for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, a corn dog can look like a pheasant under glass mm-hmm. if uh, you haven't eaten in a long time. She's on a stick. But you know what I was thinking about? No, that is really good. <laughs> you know what I was thinking about with Chuck? This would be a horrible thing to say, but you know what, Drew? We're too old to see girls we haven't seen in a while and see how they've blossomed. Do you know what I'm talking about? Guys, enjoy this, because uh, it doesn't happen when you get older. Drew, you're what, 43, 40, 42? Yeah. Right. You've, you know, if you saw some chick you last saw her when she was 23, and you see her now, it's like, oh, Christ, honey, what happened? Did you get run over? What happened? Is this some uh, accident at the plant? What the hell happened? I mean, the best you can say at our age, and I, I know this sounds sexist and double standard and horrible, but the, the best you can say is, hey, holding up pretty good. Hey, she's, uh, she don't look like crap. <laughs> that is like, that is high praise. And you don't have that. When you're, when you're 15, 16, 17, you're dating girl, and then you see her again at 21, 22, you're like, whoa. Honey, you shed that weight. You're looking good. What happened? What'd you do? Cut your hair? Oh, you got your teeth fixed. Yeah. But uh, that don't happen later in life. So I'm just saying, enjoy it. Because when I see those girls I went to high school with now, I'm like, well, I'm glad you didn't you didn't have sex with me now. When did you see people from high school? Yeah, you're, oh, reunions. And you went to a reunion? I, uh, I'm in a re- re- reunion in... Uh, I would pay to be at one of your reunions. Oh, yeah? Is you want to go one? instead of me? Is there one coming up? Well, let's see. Yeah, yeah, because uh, I graduated 18. Yeah, I'm going to have a 20-year reunion in another, like, year oh. and a half or two years oh, or something like that. Man. Oh, <laughs> I yes. have to witness this. You yes. and Chris and yes. and but but let, let me tell you something. Anyone who's going to attend the uh, 1982 graduating class of North Hollywood High reunion, I will be returning like MacArthur returned to the Philippines. You're going to walk be, right I, out of the ocean. I will, I will pull up in an amphibious landing craft. <laughs> I'm going to be wearing a cape and a crown. I will have a uh, orchestra playing as I enter. All will hail the uh, king. See, my last reunion, I was still swinging a hammer, so it wasn't any fun. And my buddy Ray peed on me. Oh, well, that was all a good time. You know, just yeah. relive the past, you know. Sure, why not? <laughs> I'm wearing a blazer. We're in a Bonaventure Hotel, and he takes a leak on me. Yeah. Al? High school. Yeah, hello? You're 18. What's up? Yeah, um, like, I was at work the other day, and we were discussing, like, you know, stupid stuff. And um, all of a sudden, some guy told, the, told me that, um, that every, like, 
like year, you should go get your like rectum clean out. Right. Uh, why? How, why? What would that do? I don't know. He just told me, like, dude, you should go do that because it'll clean out your system. Clean out what? That is outside your body. You mean like an enema? Yeah, something like that. I don't know. He says that, like, the doctors would, like, go clean with the uh, prognosis. No, like, no, 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 Al, please, no. Like, to, like, not to get, like, infections and stuff. No, like no. no. All right. Yeah. Where, who do you work with? Who is this guy? Oh, I work in a kitchen. I work in the hospital, actually, in the hospital, in the kitchen. Uh -huh. And, like, this guy was just like, he said, no, some nurse told me this. And I'm like, are you serious? He's like, yeah. How bad is that hospital food? <laughs> oh, it's bad, dude. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, it ain't nothing compared to what it was in the 70s and 80s. Let me tell you something. Uh, really? Yeah. Oh, no. Everything was Hugely bad. improved. Oh, yeah. Huh. Well, I don't know what food was like at uh, your school, but uh, you went to a decent school. Did they have decent On food? college? <laughs> no, not in college. In, like, high school, junior high? No. No, they had a lunch truck. Oh, the lunch truck. Yeah, same guy to go to your construction well, site. Still a step up from uh, what you'd get over at uh, the city school. Mary? Yeah, I'm here. You're 22? I'm 22. Um, well, I get sick all the time. In the last six months, I've been sick about eight times. What do you mean sick? Just like having colds. Like I have a cold right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always get fevers. And I'm just wondering, you know, why, I mean, I get even near to someone that has a cold and then I get it. And, you know, I don't know if I'm anemic or I don't know. Do you have any medical problems that would put you at risk um, for infection? Uh, well, I'm, I'm bulimic. Oh, by, oh, by the way. <laughs> yeah. yeah, of course. It, that's a terrible stress to your system and it makes it difficulty for your immune system to function. Naturally enough, you come in contact with infection, you're going to get it. And you'll have more complications from the infections, too. What can I do about it? You can get your bulimia treated. <laughs> okay. Anything else? No, wait, stop for a second. Stop, no. put, put her on hold, please. Just for a second, no, please, please. Okay. Let's talk about it. Why, that's the reaction that really pisses me off. Why, why does, and that's the denial piece that really I, I get so frustrated with. Yeah. What is that? I don't know. You don't, you don't care. Oh, I care, but I just don't care to care. I care because that's that's the part that prevents her from getting well. It's like, well, yeah. go at my chronic disease. I mean, why would I do that? Okay. Well, let me yell at her. Four. Where is she lying for him? Hey, Mary? Yeah? You need to handle your bulimia and mm -hmm. uh, then worry about all the little crap that you're worrying about now instead of worrying about your bulimia. That's what we call rearranging the deck chairs on the Titanic. Okay. The colds, deck chairs. Titanic going down because of bulimia. Okay? okay. All right. All right. So get yourself some help. Thank you. You're calling from Van Nuys? Yeah. Oh, get out of that hell hole. <laughs> first, first and foremost. Dump city. I'm going to go bulimic just Wh thinking about Where do you now. live in Van Nuys? Um, uh, around uh, Sherman Way. No! Oh! Oh. I know. It's horrible. Oh. <laughs> what a pit. Get out of there. Tell me about it. Well, get out of there. Yeah. Go to Sherman Oaks. I will. Please. Oh, I will. I'm going to tell all you people, you, you live in these hell holes and you, you don't even care. This Van Nuys is a dump. I grew up in North Hollywood. That was a dump. I had friends in Van Nuys. I worked in Van Nuys. It's a horrible place. Van Nuys means, uh, it actually means hell hole in Spanish. Does it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's well good. It's properly named. The point is, is if you can scrape together another sixty-five bucks a month rent, you can uh, slide over to Sherman Oaks and uh, you'll be fine. And uh, oh, handle your bulimia while you're at it. Here we go, Jesse. Yeah, you're fifteen. Yep. What's up? Well, uh, me and my girlfriend, we were messing around today, and uh, well, anyways, <laughs> I. I guess I um. No, no, no. Go ahead. I uh, ejaculated, you know. Yeah. And I may have gotten it on my hand, and you know, I guess uh, gotten it, you know, in her. <laughs> yeah. This was the first time you'd messed around like this with your girlfriend. No, but it's the first time that you know. Something came out of you. Yeah. And so you're freaked out. No, I just freaked out because... Yeah, uh, you're freaking out because you're thinking about all the possible ways that what came out of you might have gotten into her. No, just that one. Mm, right, so it 
she gave you the handy, but it got on your hand? Well, something like that. Well, what was it? Help us understand. Uh, oral. Ooh, 15. Jeez, where do you go from there? Not up, brother. Just sideways from now on. You don't go anywhere from oral. That's it. You've peaked at 15. Enjoy. <laughs> so she gave you oral. Something came out of your penis. She spit it onto your hand. Well, see, it was on my stomach. And, uh -huh. you know, yeah. kind of. Yeah. All right. Well, you brush it off and then grab her. I mean, what'd you do? Yeah, pretty much that. Brushed it off and then went right for her. Well, I, you know, waited, but still. Yeah. How long Wait, ago did this happen? Wash my hands and put on latex clothes. Uh, but still, a couple hours ago. Yeah, I see. Well, she, if you are concerned, I, I, there's no. You, you're obviously not yeah. gonna. You're not gonna give us enough information for us to judge whether this is even a realistic possibility. But no, I'm if you're concerned, no. all right. But if you're concerned, she can certainly take the morning after pill, and that will okay. substantially. If she takes it in the next 24 hours, she will reduce the risk of pregnancy by about 90 percent. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to know, like, is there, like, what's the biggest percentage that she could be? Um, 100%. 17%. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, she's... Well, you just, that's the <laughs> biggest percentage. Yeah, there's no such question like that. Okay? Okay. She could get pregnant, and that's that. All right. All right, but she's not going to get pregnant. Okay. Not from this. All right, thanks. All right, but, but now you guys are sexually active, sort of. Sort of. Even if you're doing it sort of manually. Uh... So by proxy, get, get her on. Get her on some. Uh, uh, just be more responsible. Yeah. Now you know why I was laughing at the uh, top of the call. Uh. I was thinking about how I always say uh, Van Nuys is a dump. Yeah. North Hollywood's a dump, and then I think about, well, doesn't that upset people? And then I realized we never got a phone call with anyone upset or defending because yeah, they live in the dump. <laughs> they, they know, <laughs> they, they, know they, where they live. They know it. Yeah. Who's going to argue with that, Jessica? Yeah. You're 15. Hi. What's up? Um, I just have, like, this really big fear of, like, okay, because I'll hang out with these guys and my friends and stuff, mm -hmm. and they'll just, like, be sh shown up there because I won't know that they're going. And, like, I don't know, I guess sometimes they get a crush on me, and then when somebody tells me, I, like, completely stop talking to them, and uh, I, uh, yeah, I just mm -hmm. get have you ever Have you ever been interested in one of the guys that uh, is interested in you? Well, it's just like whenever the guys that I have a crush on never seem to like me. Right. Okay. And so you don't want to be sort of intruded upon by these guys that do like you. I don't you. know. I just get like really scared of them. That's and all I right. Just, like, I, it's, uh, you're 15. You, you may not yet have the skills in order to manage guys that sort of come on to you that way. That's all right. That's all right. Uh, the, uh, the more interesting question is why you can't uh, sort of let it be known to the guys you are interested in. I don't know. I get, I'm afraid he'll like reject me. How old are the guys that you're hanging out with? How old are they now? Like 15. Same age as me. Okay. Well, who do you like right now? Um, this guy at my school. Yeah. What's his name? Kurt? <laughs> no. Joey. I'm never right with that Kurt guest. Joey. Know. Joey? Hmm? Is his name Joey? Shelly? Joey. No. Ramon? No. <laughs> Steve? No. Frank? No. Tom? R Bob? No. -uh. Any any part of Bob like Robert or no. Bobby? Uh -uh. William, Larry? Thank you, sweet spirit. Uh, Brad? Nope. Chuck? Nope. Jim? Nope. Mike? Nope. Rondo? No. Julio? No. Is it a, is it a bizarre name? No. Drew? No. Adam? No. Robert? No. You gonna give us a name? <laughs> no, no. And hang on, Jessica. I wanna I wanna I wanna keep guessing this guy's name. Okay. <laughs> All right, it's a regular name, right? Yeah. Stu? Steve. No. Brian. What to start with? No, 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 no. Don't know help it. Bryant? No. Duke? No. Dan? No. Okay, hang on. Todd? No, wait a minute. Jessica? Yeah. Todd? No. Hold on. Todd, that's a lame guess. I know you like that name, though. Hold on, Anderson says Chris. Chris? Okay, wait a minute, it's got to be. Jessica? Yeah. Chris? No. Nope. All right, hold on. Ray? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I gave Mike. Wait a minute, I got Anthony. Hold on. Let's try. Anthony? Nope. Ray? Uh-uh. Okay, hang on. Okay, don't ha don't go anywhere, because it's a regular name. We should have give us the first letter. No, she doesn't. All right. We should have gotten it by now. Yes. We named 25 good 
basic straight names. I, the name is going to be, you know, something more ridiculous. Okay, well, well, wait a minute. Just wait one second. <laughs> Jessica. Yeah? Don't tell us the name. Okay. And don't tell us the first letter it begins with. Okay. But answer this question. Huh? Is it an ethnic name or is it an American name? It's an American name. An American Jason. name. A what? Jason. Nicholas. Mm -mm. Jason. Nope. All right, hold on. Jeffrey Jason. Josh. No, wait a minute. Joshua. That's it. That's it. And and listen, I hold one more thing. Joshua. Josh? Nope. Okay, hang on. Jessica? Yeah. Now it can't I don't want any derivative things. If we said Steve and he goes by Steven, We're okay. you got you gotta sound off, right? Well yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, hang, on. Lionel. hang on. Hang on. Hang on. Okay, kids, this could be the rest of the show. <laughs> it's a straight American name. I'm only going to take calls that are guesses now on uh, <laughs> this guy's name. It's a regular American name. I know I'm going to throttle her <laughs> when I find out the guy's name is Hezekiah. Yeah. <laughs> but we're going to take a break. We'll, we'll finish the guessing after this. Hi, this is David Arquette, and you're listening to The Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. All righty, kids. Rob Schneider in tomorrow night. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. When we left off, we are speaking to Jessica. Jessica, is your radio turned down now, by the way? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now, you're 15. Uh-huh. You're a little creeped out by guys you don't like, but you're unable to connect with guys you do like. Yeah, it, like, bugs me all day. I think about it all day. More importantly, there's a guy you have a crush on at school, right? Uh -huh. And you have not been able to muster the courage to come up and talk to him, right? Uh -huh. Well, I'm, like, friends with him, but I can't tell him that I like him. I see. And his name is Gordon. Nope. David. Nope. Jordan. Nope. Curtis. Nope. Douglas. Nope. Richard. No. Nope. Ron. No. Nope. Craig. No. Nope. Greg. No. Nope. Peter. Dick. Nope. Daniel. No. Nope. Bruce. No. Nope. Dennis. No. Nope. Turk. No. Frank. Art. Arthur. Arthur. No. What's going on in the background there, Screwball? Uh, my TV's on. All right, please turn it down. Andy. Right. Jesus okay. Christ. Andy. Andy. No. Jeremy. Jack. Ryan. No. Arnold. No. Alfonso. <laughs> no. All right, come on. Think of what, what? Think of your parents' names. Think, think of some easy names here. Chris, Christopher, Christoph. That's my dad's name. Aha! Uh -huh. We're getting warm. <laughs> Edward. Edward. Uh uh. Now I I, I swear and you know what's going to happen, Jessica. Uh -huh. You are going to give me the name of someone I named ten minutes ago, and I'm going to fly out to Phoenix and strangle <laughs> you. <laughs> okay. Should we do it? I know. I, I, I refuse. Now, hold on. Hold on. Rob. I, I did Rob. Rob? Uh-huh. Huh? What? Is his name Rob? No. Ricky. Okay. Uh, Rick. No. Stu. Richard? No. I did Stu. And Larry? No, Larry? All the good ones. Larry? Uh-uh. Curtis? Kirk? Ben. Oh. Benjamin? No. Uh -uh. Jack? Nope. I, did, I did that one. All right. Hang That's on. That's it. There's hang no on. more. Hang on. There's no more male names. Uh, this is a normal American first name, right? Uh -huh. Sam. Ooh. Mm -mm. Ooh, that was a good one, though. Okay, hang on. i got to look to the peanut gallery now. They they wrote down all those names. There's nothing in there. Lee. I did Lee. Uh, Kevin. Lee, Kevin. Nope. Okay, hang on. <laughs> nope. Jessica, just hang on. We gotta take some more calls. Then we'll get some good names. Gabriel. Hmm? Gabrielle. Oh, Gabrielle. I'm I'm making it into a boy's name. Oh well, that's okay. Uh, you're thirty one. I'm trying to think of uh, that. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> oh, um well, yeah, I'm thirty one and about six months ago I started having like a a new kind of orgasm in addition to the old one. <laughs> wow. And oh, I'm trying to figure out what the hell it is and why it's starting now after I've been, you know, sexually active half my life. Well what are these new experiences? Um it's like, it's a much smaller release, but it's much easier, you know. It happens more frequently. Um, before, I could only have clitoral orgasms that were very intense. It took a long time. And this is like, I can have it from intercourse, from, from almost anything. And it's short and sudden, and it's really, really wet. And when did this start? About six months ago. Uh-huh. What's, what's, are you married? 
Uh, no, I'm divorced. No. What was your ex-husband's name? <laughs> <laughs> it's important. Josh. 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 We did that one and we used that one. <laughs> Still trying to figure out the uh, the question. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Uh, uh, Gabrielle, uh, are you on any medication? I'm on Paxil. That's what's doing it. But I've been on it for two years. Well, it's probably what's doing it still. Well, it's interesting that it changes orgasmic function. Usually it diminishes it. Are you having more difficulty having a clit clitoral orgasm? No, the, that this, the, old, the old orgasm is the same. This yeah. is like just I, more. I, I bet it's the Paxil, though. I really do. And because Paxil just changes all that function and changes it in different ways in different people. Usually in the downward direction makes it worse, but I can see where it could make a better change, too. Well, it's really embarrassing. I mean, I feel like I should only date guys named Noah now. I'm like... I'm just... It's you got Bill Nark. No. You get it there? Yeah, it's guys. really bad. Yeah. yeah guys are, are pleased when they achieve that with you. You think so? Oh, they, oh yeah. They feel like they, 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 they see yeah, something for their fine. labor. Yeah, don't That's worry. That's right. No right. problem. They're, they're, they're self-impressed. So so you think it's it's happening because of the Paxful? All right. I suspect. But even well, be that as it may, you, just, you become multi-orgasmic. You get older, things loosen up yeah, down Testosterone there. levels go up, and you know, these functions do cool. change with time, for sure. All right. Jessica? Yeah. Bjork. Gavin. Nope. Uh, Victor. Victor. M Victor. I did no. a Victor. No. Monty? Uh-uh. Ben, Alex, Tony? Uh-uh. Mute? That's a Jewish name. <laughs> no? No. Okay. Hang Win. on. Hang on. Win? No. Uh -huh. I wouldn't accept that as a, as a standard American name. Hang on a second. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Let's go some letters here. I think with M other than Monty, what do we got? M. We did the R J. We did Ralph. Ooh, I don't think Ooh. we did Ralph. No. Are you gonna get your hopes up about yeah. Ralph? Ralph. No. Oh. Okay. Hang on. Mark. Yeah. You're forty. Yeah. Good evening, gentlemen, and thanks for taking my call. I'm a long time uh, listener, but I've never called before. So, sure. So uh, appreciate you taking my call. Here we are. Well, thanks. What is your call? Uh, anyway, um, I've got a. Uh, kind of a troubling situation. I've uh, been an amputee for uh, 20 years as a result of a motorcycle accident. I have an above the knee amputation on my right leg. Mm. And uh, I'm pretty active. Good times. Uh, oh, good but, times. Good times, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I have a nagging problem with uh, what they call phantom pain. Ouch. Uh, yeah. Phantom pain is in a plastic foot I don't have. Everybody yeah. knows it's plastic, but it hurts like, uh, it hurts bad. Phantom, phantom pain, literally you feel like that limb that you had is still there, and, and you're feeling pain in it. Yeah, but, you know, most of the times, uh, most of the amputees I've talked with don't even have this problem. Right. Not only do I have the problem, but it seems to be getting worse. I've just been through three days of, of intense pain. and Are I, you doing drugs, taking opiates? Uh, well, I, I've been prescribed Darvocet by mm -hmm. uh, an orthopedic doctor. It's part of my HMO. Does that help? Uh, are you uh, actually having pain in... Yeah. In yeah. Yeah. would you yeah, shut up, weird, Drew? In the, in, you, have, you have a prosthetic leg? Yeah. And you have a foot? And yeah. you're, you're actually in pain in the foot of yeah. the prosthetic yeah, line? It feels, like, it, it feels like someone is taking a high-voltage wire and stabbing at my heel. It's uh, If he took off the prosthetic leg, he'd still have the pain. Yeah, it's, it's, it changes. Well, it well, you have to burn you, the prosthetic you leg. The prosthetic, I mean, it just it, it, it becomes like a part of you. It's, it's very, very strong. Uh, so if you took the prosthetic Wait, off, oh, oh. hold on. If you took the prosthetic off for two days, mm -hmm. would you still have the pain? Yes. And where would the pain be? Uh, well, it would be towards the end of the, you know, the amputated leg, but it doesn't have, I guess, the definition it does when you have the actual... Uh, he, he would right. perceive it still as in a foot that's not there. That's yeah. why it's called phantom. Yeah. The phantom limb pain, it's called. The troubling thing is it's difficult to, you know, uh, to explain this to most medical doctors that don't even understand the condition exists. I beg your pardon. I, that's something that any first-year medical student would know about. Well, that. I've, had, I've had a so. lot of difficulty. In, it's in, difficult to treat, and people might yeah. blow it off because it's so diff impossible to treat. And you should see a pain specialist. Mm -hmm. They have spinal nerve stimulators and all <laughs> kinds of things they can do to treat this. Exactly. And it's, it's a nerve issue. It's a spinal, it's a spinal reflex and a, and a peripheral nerve problem. Well, where is the leg that was amputated? Because you're going to have to get a priest in there to exercise <laughs> it. That's the only way to get rid of phantom pain. Well, uh, I was just going to ask you, Dr. Drew, is there anything that uh, is is uh, developing in this in the Yeah, a ton. Now, you really do. You need to go down to Irvine and go to the chronic pain program and see what they can do. They've got an anesthesia and a neurosurgery department there that both deals with chronic pain. They have all kinds of new things for this. 
there's spinal stimulators, there's intrathecal injections, there's it depends where the localized the pain syndrome is coming from. Yeah. Huh? I'm I'm trying to come up with names here. Well, let's Jessica. talk to her again. Yeah. Jessica? Uh huh. Did I did I do George? Uh I don't know. Oh. Is it George? Uh uh-uh. uh. <sighs> She's just toying with us now. Nicholas? I think Nathan? I did a Nick. Nathan? Nathan. Uh uh-uh. uh. Orville? Uh uh-uh. uh. Wilbur? Wilbur? Paul? I think I did Paul. Um, it's not Wilbur. Paul? Uh-uh. Okay. Hey, Jessica? Yeah? You know that game, To Tell the Truth? Uh-huh. Where those three people try to fake out the uh, celebrity contestants? Uh-huh. This ain't that. I know. If, if you hear the name, sound off. William. Don't keep groaning and then going back. Not William. Not William. She kind of responded to that W name a little bit. Barry. Stay with W for a second. Barry? Uh uh-uh. uh. You, you want to say W? Yeah, w Warren? List. No. Ooh, good one. Uh, what? Wes? No. Uh, Willie? No. True. Should, uh, are we staying with these stupid W's because you've no got a hair up your ass? Yeah. And hang on, Jessica. Yeah. <laughs> and anyone who just tuned in, I'm trying to figure out the name of the guy that Jessica has a crush on. She says it's a normal American name. I know I'm going to kill her when she gives me the name. But because it's going to be Octavio. It'll be Octavio, or it'll be the third name that I mentioned, but she wasn't listening because <laughs> Sally, right. Jesse, Raphael That's right. was playing. Hold on, like, give me an okay. Raphael? Yeah. What? Yeah. That's it? Wait, what did you say? Raphael? Oh, no. Jesse? Yeah. Yes? Oh, wait. <laughs> I thought you were saying my name. Sorry. Uh, um, no, no, it's not it's Jesse. Not. Alex? Uh-huh. Sally? Nope. Okay, hang we on. We did those. We did the Josh's. And someone's got a suggestion for <laughs> Alex? Hey, um... You're 16. I a, yeah. I have a suggestion. Go ahead. For the names, it's, um... Alex, Chad, <laughs> Kyle... Oh, Chad, Kyle, yeah. Chad and Kyle. And Good. Cody. Oh, Cody, yeah. All those <laughs> new gay names I forgot about. <laughs> Cody. Dan? We did Dan. Yeah, we did that. Kyle? And Don. Don. I think I did Don. Jim. We did Jim. No, I James. did Jim. I did oh, yeah, Jim. 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 All right, James. look, I'll redo Jim, but yeah. that that that's under protest. So what do you got? Don, Jim, Kyle, Cody, and Chad, and uh, right. Mark and Kyle. Mark. I did Mark. Okay, thanks. Hang on, Alex. Okay. Jessica. Yeah. Chad. Nope. Cody. Nope. Kyle. Uh uh-uh. uh. Don. Uh uh-uh. uh. Jim. Uh uh-uh. uh. Hang on. <laughs> I'm at my wits end with this bitch. And ask for her. Justin. I swear we did a Justin. No, no, no. We haven't done it yet. I think we've done Justin. Jessica? Yeah. Justin? Yeah. What? You guys. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I have a gift. And I tell Drew all the time, and he does not buy into it. It's an intuitive thing. But out of. The hundreds, maybe thousands of names, I got it after like 375 names. And that's... Imagine the odds. Uh, it's, it's astronomical. Justin? Yeah. Didn't I do a Justin 45 minutes ago? Nuh-uh. Nuh-uh. Okay. So you like Justin? Mm-hmm. Okay. I like to well, kill thanks. this Justin. <laughs> Go, on. Go ask him out tomorrow, would you? I'm on um, summer break. Okay. Uh, well, uh, what's he doing? Do it in September. You got an email address for him or anything? I'm changing schools soon. That's even better. There's no downside to asking yeah. him. Yeah. Go for broke. Can you find him? Um, no. You don't know his last name? Well, I know his last name, but I don't know his number. No email address? Uh-uh. Call information and get his name. <laughs> yeah. Make I don't him, want him to think I'm stalking him. What do you care? You're moving. You're going to another school. He, I promise you he will be flattered. Go even, for even broke. Even if he says no. Even if he can't do it or is not interested, he'll be moved, flattered. Go for broke, baby. Uh-uh. You're going guaranteed. to another school. You never see him again, Just right? Guaranteed he'll be flattered. Guaranteed. Okay? All right. All right. Justin. Well, we really helped her out. I, I think I said Justin. I, I really don't. Oh, maybe I didn't. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to take a break. We'll be back. Hey! Love Line. I'm Adam. That's uh, Don't Call Me Justin, Dr. Drew over there. 
Rob Schneider in tomorrow night. We're doing some real important work here this evening. Jesse? Yeah, hi. <clears throat> You're we, 20. Wasn't that Jesse was just driving us insane? Yeah, that was chick Jesse. Uh, this is, yeah, I'm a guy. This is dude Jesse. Hi. What's happening, dude Jesse? Not much. Uh, I was hoping to get your opinions and advice on what it takes <clears throat> to be successful in therapy. All right. Uh, just hang in. Hang in and, and, and uh, be willing. Okay. Be willing. That, that is that is the one piece of advice. I gave a lecture the other day. Where I tried to struggle with. I was, I was at a group of addicts, and we were trying to uh, come to terms with how do you give somebody get it. I think I talked about this the other night. How do you get them to sort of get it? To be willing to follow direction. To be willing to give in to the process of treatment. And it's hard. It's hard to get somebody there. And a good therapist will sort of connect with you where you are, and, and find a way to build a relationship wherever it is you are, and then you'll get it eventually. Are you going to a therapist now? Well, I see a psychiatrist for uh, schizophrenia. Mm -hmm. uh, well, schizophrenia is not something that responds particularly oh. to therapy, right? Right. Well, yeah, but I, I have some emotional problems okay. aside from that, you know. All right. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, huh? Yeah, all right. Well, yeah, stay with, uh, just stay with the work. I mean, you know what you have to do, right? Yeah, yeah, you got to get into treatment. You taking medication? Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. All right. They got some good stuff for schizophrenia now, right? Oh yeah. We're on close reel, something like that. Uh, no, I'm on Seroquel. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. It's working pretty good. All, All right, right Jesse. Good luck. Keep up and, the good work. Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, you know, I really respect your guys' opinion. Hi, Jay. <laughs> Drew, I really respect your opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jesse. It means a lot to us. It does. And it'd mean more to more to us if you kept with uh, your program. Absolutely. Yeah, and I was hoping to hear Adam's opinion on, you know, because I know you've been through a lot of therapy and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah my opinion is uh, show up, and you know you can treat. I mean, look at it this way. It's it's not a great analogy, but it's somewhat apropos. If if you if you go to a personal trainer once a week, and you sit there, right. In um, your jeans and uh, sweat jacket. Or, or well, just say, I can't, I can't. Yeah, right. I can't. You just sort of stand around. Then the wor the world's best personal trainer will get no results. And if you just do what they tell you to do and work with them and essentially break a sweat. The harder you work, the... You'll get something out of it. Mm -hmm. It's the same with therapy. Not that I do that, but that's for you guys. Yeah, have you, have you yet talked to your therapist about anything meaningful? Not that I'm aware of, okay. no. Yeah. No. Jessica, is this yeah. the, is this Jessica Central here? Jesse, Jessica, yeah, you must be named Jessica to call the station. Yes. What's up? You're 18. Yeah. Um, like a month ago, I found a bump on my vagina, and um, I didn't think anything of it because I just thought it was like an ingrown hair. And then my friends were saying that it could have just be like a harmless cyst, but I wanted to go to the doctor anyways, so I got in there today. And she saw it, and she's like, oh, no, it's nothing. You know, it's just an ingrown hair. And she wanted to just leave it, but I didn't want her to. So she's like, okay, you know, I'll cut it open, and I'll let it drain or whatever. And she cut it open, and she's like, uh, this is definitely not an ingrown hair. This is definitely not a cyst. And she was, like, digging around, and she's like, I have no idea what this is. And um, she's like, oh, it, sh it should go down, but I think I'm going to have to get a second opinion and come back in six weeks. Mm -hmm. And that scares me, and so... If she'd like numbed it, she put a shot in it and the numbing wore off and now I'm in extreme pain. Oh boy. I can barely walk and it's like swelled up. Oh boy. And um it's like black and I haven't I haven't told my mom so I have to whisper. Well the black is just sort of bleeding, blood. Yeah, it, it well it just makes it look ten times worse. Yeah. I, what what kind of doctor does she want you to see? Uh she said that she said that if I came back in six weeks she'd get another gynecologist and she'd get a dermatologist. Well why wait six weeks? I don't, that's what I don't know why that. you that's gotta what push. my friends are saying. No, you gotta push harder. Well this is on the outside I'm, of your vagina? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Well, it seems to me that next week or two that ought to be figured out. Okay. Like, yeah, be, like my friend's mom said that it could be um a a gland, like a blocked up, because it's big and hard. Yeah, it's probably a, what's a Barthlin's gland that, that gets clogged. But even so, if, she, if the doctor really has no idea what it is, you need a diagnosis. So push on for that. Dustin? Dustin? Yeah. We didn't guess that one. No. You're 17? Yeah. You're gay? Yeah. And? And, well, 
um, I'm gay and I like I, it's just kind of hard where I live to find people but like where I work this person recently like, came out to me mm -hmm. and he was just like yeah hey and we, t we were talking and then we went out to the movies um, on Monday Memorial Day right and then he started like asking questions and stuff like that and you know so I answered him because I'm more used to the lifestyle because when I figured out that I was gay I just like accepted it I'm just like right. this is who I am okay. you're gay oh right. please yes. and what's the question well, he, he's new to this, and um, when I answer these questions, he it don't sound like he was like uncomfortable around me, and like he he doesn't understand what's happening or anything like that. Well, and I, maybe you can help him be more at ease with all this. Yeah, you'd be his well, gay guide. Yeah, I, well, it's just like I want him. I want to be. I want him to be like comfortable around me. Except whenever I approach him, I feel like he's he's acting weird around me. Well, do you do you like him? Yeah. Well, he probably likes you, or he wouldn't have brought it up. Tell him to calm down, that's all. Yeah, just, okay. just take it slow. How old is he? He's 16. Yeah. yeah has, he been with, has he been with a guy? He has not. Okay. Yeah, it's nervous for him. It's yeah. the first time. He's, uh, he's breaking ground and breaking behind us. <laughs> and, yeah, feel it out. Take it slow. Don't freak the guy out. It'll all work out. Good times. <laughs> we'll be back. Well, there you go. Another fantabulous uh, Love Line show. We learned all the male names in the Bible. Rob Schneider. Tomorrow, tomorrow night. Yeah. And until next time, this Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Jessica? Yeah. Justin? Yeah. What? You guys... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this has been Love Line. The opinions expressed on this show are not necessarily those of the staff, management, sponsors, or this station. The producer for Loveline is Ann Wilkins Engel. Loveline is a presentation of Westwood One Entertainment.